Okay, what up, friendos? We're talking today about Assassin's Creed, Ubisoft, the absolute epitome of failure for such a huge company with such recognized video game franchises and years and years of, of I guess, previously success, but now, of course, mediocrity or worse. And basically what's been going on, because there's there's been a lot since the last video I made on this, if you didn't watch that, there was some hilarious shenanigans with one of the minor shareholders calling for essentially a hostile takeover of the company, calling for other investors to join with them and to out the CEO, who was, you know, him and his brothers have been in charge of Ubisoft since the beginning of the company, I do believe. It's essentially Ubisoft is their baby. And they were saying, you know, we need to get them out of there because the company's failing and it is. The company's failed horrendously. It's it's actually been really bad. And it's even worse now because they've just delayed Assassin's Creed Shadows until, I believe, February 14th. Yeah, Feb 14th, 2025. Which, if you've not seen, by the way, the first few months of 2025 is stacked like fuck in terms of good games coming out. Uh, specifically ones that would compete with Assassin's Creed Shadows. And I've said a few times, and I do believe that this is true, and this will play a factor here for what's going to happen with Ubisoft going forward and a lot of these other big companies like EA and things like that. It's that mediocrity is no longer something you can actually have if you're spending large sums of money on video games because every time you make a game now, basically it's competing against so much media, against so many good games that are releasing from indies, from double A's, from all the triple A's, from quadruple A's as Ubisoft wants to put it that you just can't. You can't release mediocrity that costs a lot of money and expect to do anything well in terms of finances for your company. And Ubisoft are one of the first big companies to discover this. You can't rest on your laurels. You can't just basically repost the same game with slight differences every year or two. And you definitely can't release games that are buggy. Let's read and then we'll go over the fact that the stock price has dropped another 20% and the company is essentially in free fall with a decade low price, which is fucking insane considering where other similar companies are currently at. So dear players, Assassin's Creed Shadows is a dream project for us, finally bringing the series to feudal Japan with many features developed with our community in mind, such as parkour on, or the renewed self, brought by technology all set in a beautiful immersive world. It's ambitious and it's a rich experience that can be lived through the eyes of two unique protagonists, but we realize we need more time to polish and refine the experience pushing further some of our key features. Now, obviously, this is just a, a flowery way of saying, yeah, we think the game is great, but we are delaying it. And the narrative I saw was that, oh, the game must be really fucked for them to be delaying it. And I would just say they've already recognized internally that uh, Star Wars Outlaws launched too soon and the share price fell as a result because of basically four or five years of negative or mediocre results has basically basically pushed the sentiment uh, of people who would buy shares in this company to a, to an all-time low so the delay in my mind is more of a like this is it now this is all the eggs in the assassin's creed shadows basket we need to make sure this game is fucking squared away we need to make sure this is 100 percent playable not crazy bugs not a shitty launch like like star wars outlaws because that game was was harmed by the initial release because by all accounts the game's actually quite good it's just that it had a bad launch and and it was rushed it needed at least probably four five six more months of development to get it to the stage where it could have released and probably done considerably better than it did now assassin's creed being their biggest franchise i'd argue they can't afford a repeat of that, like literally can't afford a repeat of that because the company is fucked. That There's so many negative headlines coming about out about Ubisoft at this point that th they can't release a game that's not, you know, 100, 110% because that it could just be the end. Like this company could legitimately just go nowhere from here apart from down and they understand that. So they decided to postpone the release date until Feb 14th, 2025, and the game will release on a broad range of platforms, including Steam at launch. So no Epic exclusivity, which again would harm sales because exclusivity harms sales. We all know it does. And they said that they've refunded all future pre-orders 
and we'll grant the first expansion for free. I saw this and some people were like, lol, they've already developed an expansion and they're not including it in the base game. That's not what this says. This is basically the same thing they always do. And this is the same thing even companies like From Software do and they bum bundle in, you know, uh, the addition of the game where you can buy and get like, oh, you get the every DLC that's going to release and we have three expansions in mind or whatever. That's what they mean, as in when that first expansion is done, you'll get it for free if you did pre-order. Um, well, if you do pre-order the future one. That's what they're saying, not that they've actually already got an expansion done. I, I saw that as like a weird misunderstanding. So the rest of this is just bullshit, basically. But what is interesting is that there was a leaked internal memo from Yves Guillemot, um, the CEO. And basically, there's, there's a whole lot of reading between the lines here uh, that tells a, a pretty interesting story about what's going on at the company. And I guess I can show you as well. This was the initial like rumblings of shit going wrong. Ubisoft ca canceled press previews of Assassin's Creed Shadows and they pulled out of the Tokyo game show completely. Like they were going to show multiple games there, I believe. And they just pulled out like the company's basically going into like fucking cocoon protective mode right now because they understand, you know, how, how deep the stakes are. And again, it wasn't just because I don't know why people did this, but they sort of ran with this headline of, oh, you know, the stock crash was purely based on the, the fact that they delayed the game. It wasn't. It was because they also updated their financial target, which is typically how investors, at least in the short to medium term, will make decisions based on what they're going to buy and sell. If obviously the, they change their financial targets to be lower, which means they expect to make less money then you can look at that and say, oh, why would I hold these shares now? Or why would I buy these shares? Because the expectation of, of returns on the company and, and making the company more value are lower. It's essentially a cascading effect. The company's sentiment is at an all-time low. Bad decision, bad decision, bad thing happened, bad thing happened. Uh, oh, we're, we're going to make less money this quarter now. And if we're saying that, you know it's actually going to be really bad. And it's based on this. And then we're delaying this game. It's basically a culmination of everything, which is interesting because while being a little bit more nuanced and a little bit more inclusive of the details, is actually worse as a uh, painting a picture of Ubisoft than just saying, oh, you know, everyone sold the shares because of Star Wars Outlaws being a lackluster release or because of the delay of Assassin's Creed. When you take in all the information, it's actually fucking drastically worse, which is why people should probably be aware that this is also going on. Not just that, but the hits just, they keep on coming because French Ubisoft employees urged to strike over new return to office policy. The consequence of its decision will be the loss of our colleagues' jobs. So strike action, you know, at a time when they need to get these games as good as possible, how's that gonna bode for the company's future? Like, it just seems like everything at Ubisoft, if it could go wrong, it is. And I can't be sad about it because at the end of the day, they've squandered such a huge lead in terms of like having these franchises that people really like and having the amount of employees and the amount of money to make fantastic games. And then when was the last time like a game of the year content they released from Ubisoft? Like, can anybody name it for me? Because obviously other companies are, are doing that. They're releasing the even smaller companies that no one's heard of that have just come out of nowhere. They're releasing, you know, crazy good games. And then Ubisoft that have got all this talent, all this money, or these franchises that are world known, and they just do, they do fucking nothing with it. They do the safest, you know, incremental uh, changes in games ever. And then for whatever reason, throw hundreds of millions of dollars at games that everyone can see if they're, you know, even remotely awake and aware of anything. Uh, just not going to do anything like skull and bones that shit was that was a chocolate fire guard like that ain't protecting shit so as you can see they're down to 10 euros 48 it's actually up today by five percent which is fantastic it did at one point dip below 10 euros per share which the company's market cap now is under a billion which is i mean you only have to look at the five year it was eight times more valuable like three years ago so they're having a fucking rough time but back to his statement because it, it's kind of pathetic, but he's actually recognized the culture war in this in this arg in this uh, internal memo. And for a company to do that, they're so lost, guys. They're so lost. Some people are going to argue that, Kira, you're just downplaying how big of an impact the culture war has on video game sales and stuff. I, I'm not. I, I don't think it has as big of an, uh, of an impact as people think. 
but I do believe that they now do believe that Assassin's Creed Shadows is probably going to suffer based on that because they're literally talking about it. The CEO is talking about it in this memo. So they recognize first Star Wars Outlaws initial sales proved softer than expected. Amazing wording. Despite solid ratings from players that recognized the game's faithful transcription of the original trilogy's essence and richness, 76 on Metacritic, which basically puts it as a bang average AAA game, like a 76 is not that good of a score for something that, I mean, it's a Star Wars game. It's one of the most recognized, beloved franchises on the planet with nerds. Nerds play and buy video games. Getting a 76 user score is not good for this that that's uh soft is an interesting way to put it i guess you could say it's soft as shit because you, you shouldn't be aiming for a 76 with a game like this 3.85 on ps4 4 out of 5 on xbox 4.4 on epic while players praise the details uh, the sense of the detail and the beauty of the graphics the effectiveness of the re reputation system and endearing uh, characters like nix some also noted areas of improvement yeah the game was rushed the development teams are already hard at work on this, focusing on save issues, stealth mechanics, more frequent quest checkpoints, and better NPC AI. I'm confident that these updates will significantly improve the player experience by allowing us to deliver on its promise, making Star Wars Outlaws a must-play game and long-term seller. In parallel, the publishing teams and developers are closely collaborating to increase the engagement with the game and boost player acquisition during Black Friday and the holiday season. The thing is, with single-player games, and I said this in the last video about Ubisoft, but it's just true about the industry, You've got, for a AAA priced game, you've got precisely one opportunity, one chance. You know, if you miss it, you've kind of fucked up because these games have to eventually go on sale. And if they're not something that people are raving about, that people are, are saying, oh, this is a game of the year contender, this is amazing, you'll get some sales, of course, for something that's as recognized as a Star Wars game would be but you're going to get considerably less sales because people will just wait now. Again, people are getting more and more patient, not due to the fact that they are changing, but because the industry has changed and there is just so much choice now. You've got less exclusivity than ever. You've got the blockbuster PlayStation games releasing on, on PC a, a year or two after, sometimes day in day. You've got Xbox games, all Microsoft games on PC day in day. You've got less exclusivity across platforms. Epic exclusivity is less prevalent than it was a year or two ago. You've got better indie games than ever. You've got better double A games than ever. You've got year, every time a game comes out, it's in the history books of another game you can go back and play. You've got sales happening constantly. You've got, and that's just talking about games, which obviously there's more media than ever in terms of TV shows to watch, books to read, animes to watch, movies to watch. If you release a single player game that's priced at a AAA price point and the game doesn't immediately take off and, and word of mouth doesn't spread that this game's a must play immediately, it doesn't matter if you uh, you fix the game in the short term, people are just going to wait. If they waited one week and they waited one month, they, they can wait 10 and a lot of people do. So you'll make less money. This is what I don't understand about these big companies and how common sense this seems to me. Maybe I'm wrong, but it seems very common sense that as opposed to pushing a game out to meet a quarterly goal and risking the game failing, why not make sure the game actually does well with the one opportunity that you get? And obviously Ubisoft are finding out the hard way that this is just the case. In today's ultra competitive market, players expect extraordinary experiences and ultra polished games on day one. I mean, yeah, he's, he's recognizing it in the next sentence that it is what it is. Like that's what the industry is now. We need to continue to improve when it comes to fine-tuning our games and delivering outstanding gameplay. This is what will enable Ubisoft to create the best games in the industry. Consequently, I mean, so I guess the narrative of like, oh, it's actually, you know, really bad. They are basically saying it here. We need to make sure Assassin's Creed is polished day one because now we do recognize, like, we've just had an example of a game we thought was going to do gangbuster numbers and it's basically failed from their ex estimation. Uh, we need to make sure it's playable, high quality, and has all the features the team wanted to integrate into this ambitious experience. This unusual decision at such an advanced stage is motivated by our desire to offer an optimal experience from launch on all platforms and various PC configurations, and to remove the small frictions we typically used to address in post-launch title updates. We will also use the extra time to complement the experience with a few high-impact secondary quests that will bring even more memorable moments. So realistically good news for gamers because the game is going to be better if you were going to buy assassin's creed shadows 
the delay means the game's probably going to be better than it than it was going to be. So cool, yeah. Additionally, as a result of listening to player feedback on other topics, our new releases, starting with Assassin's Creed Shadows, will again be available on Steam on launch day. In addition to being available on first parties, Epic's and uh, Ubisoft's Play Store. So basically, like previously, where the game would have come out on Epic with an exclusivity deal, and as well as on Ubisoft Store. Now it's going to be on Steam, which means they'll make less money, but they'll sell more copies, so it should recuperate. But this is another one of those things that companies are finding out. If you don't put the the game where the gamers are, they just won't buy the game. They'll they'll wait because they know eventually it will come to Steam. It's the argument of like people saying, oh, you know, you buy a PlayStation because PlayStation has cool exclusives. They're exclusive now for a year or two, and then you get them on PC. There's, there's really no point in needing to buy a PlayStation. If you are a PC person, obviously, there's a reason to buy a PlayStation if you're a console gamer. For Assassin's Creed Shadows, all players will have access to the game at the same time. So this is confirming that there will be no early access launch, which again is another thing that people can point to and say, it's just, why are you doing this in single-player games? It's shit. People don't like it. it. It makes you look stupid. And those who have pre-ordered the game will get the free ex first expansion for free. Beyond the first important short-term actions that I've outlined above, the company's top management will focus on accelerating the improvement of our production, communication, and publishing practices and processes in close collaboration with all these teams with the objective to put players at the heart of all our decisions. We will regularly update you on the progress we're making. And then, this is the very interesting part, that they're bringing this up in a fucking internal memo from the CEO to the staff. Lastly... I'd like to address the recent polarized coverage around our creative choices. They're talking about Yasuke being the Black Samurai, which obviously has got people very upset. You might ask my opinion. I don't think it's worth really getting into in this video other than I don't give a fuck. The, the guy could have been an alien for all I care. It's a work of fiction. I, I couldn't care less. People will obviously argue that like, oh, but they're saying it's, it's you know, historical. And if you've ever played an Assassin's Creed game, they say they're all historical. They're not. It's like when a movie starts and it says this is based on a true story. It doesn't have to actually be a, a full 100% historically accurate true story. There's elements of it that are historic. The rest of the game is not. Like you, you, There's literally alien artifacts and like mythical beasts and stuff in the game. It's not historically accurate. And in terms of Yasuke being a samurai or not, from what I've read, there's conflicting information on this. Some people that are experts say yes. Some people that are experts say no. Some people say there's a big conspiracy here with somebody basically uh, being paid to make stuff up and edit wiki articles. What I've read is historical experts that basically show the documentation and say he was given a stipend, which would, in that period of time, as well as carrying swords for the guy, would potentially have made him like essentially a samurai some people argue no, some people argue yes. My stance on it is I'm not an expert and I'm not going to read random people on social media who aren't experts saying one way or the other. To me, it makes no fucking difference. I, I literally couldn't care less. I'm not Japanese. I'm not going to get offended on other people's behalf. Yasuke has been called a, a samurai in Japanese media for ages. He was called a samurai in games made by Japanese studios and they were perfectly fine with it. And then now suddenly it's a big deal. I just don't give a fuck. I, I don't care. I don't care that the new Ghosts of Tushime game has a female character. I don't care that Dragon Age Veilguard has X, Y, or Z. I couldn't give a fuck. I judge media based on how I play the media, how I watch the media. Is it good? Do I enjoy it? If I do, cool. If I don't, then I'll engage with why I didn't. And typically like, oh, this character is this thing. This character is this label. It makes no difference to me. Long story short, I just don't fucking care. It, it's boring to me as a narrative. Whether Yasuke was real, not real, black, purple, fucking orange space alien will have no impact on, on how I enjoy or don't enjoy this game. The game will be good based on the gameplay or it will be bad based on the gameplay. The entire culture war thing, I think there is conversations on both sides happening that somewhat make sense. But the majority of it is basically noise that really impacts the market in no significant way, in my opinion. And people use a lot of examples of like, this game did well or this game failed based on woke or anti-woke and then they ignore all the things that did fail or didn't fail. But there we go, that's a tangent. But the fact that they are saying it, so we'd like to address it. As such, our objective is not to endorse any specific agenda. 
Our mission has always been to entertain players and enrich their lives with original and memorable experiences that resonate with a global audience. So my argument for this is what he's saying is true, only replace entertain players and enrich their lives with make money because that's what they exist to do. I don't think anyone sat there saying, oh yeah, at the expense of our company and at the expense of our business and the money we're going to make, let's do this instead. I think more common sense would be the political pendulum swings in both directions over time. And currently there's obviously a left-leaning bias in media in terms of what's represented and accepted on social media and in tech in general, because a lot of creatives are left-leaning and they are very liberal. This is just a, a fact. And you'll notice that a lot of companies post their pride flag and they only do it in areas of the world where they think that will endear them to their audience and make them more money. They don't do it in Saudi Arabia or the Middle East. They don't do it in Korea. They don't do it in China. They pander to whatever audience they think is the largest that will make them the most money. So I don't think they're pushing any ag agenda because if they were pushing an, a, an agenda, they'd be doing that in places that was basically costing them money such as in Saudi Arabia or the, or the Middle East or in Korea or in Asia in general. That's not what they're doing. They just pander to certain areas. We, we've seen what the, all these companies have done for years. Nike's going to post a pride flag in one area, like one Twitter account, and then not in other Twitter accounts for specific regions of the world. This is just what corporations do. They have no morals. They have no principles. They just want to make money. So if they think the majority of people out there, based on market data or whatever, whether it's right or wrong or whether the pendulum's swinging in the other way, or maybe they've gone too far on certain things or whatever it's going to be, whatever the reason we can say, they believe using some data or interpretation of the audience that if they are going to pander or do something that people would see is an agenda, it's with the express purpose to make money, not to push anything that they care about. Like, I guess that's the easiest way to put it. Either way, this setback should not discourage us, but serve as a learning experience and drive us to act even more quickly. More than ever, let's continue to believe in our ability to bounce back while approaching the challenges we face with lucidity and determination. I'd like to thank you for your commitment to reiterate my confidence and to reiterate my confidence in our collective ability to surprise and meet the expectations of a growing number of passionate players in the long term. That's all good and well, but you've basically been failing this game for, for this company, sorry, for six years now. You hit your peak six years ago, and then it's been all downhill from there, like a fucking Queens of the Stone Age song. You're at a 10 year low, and it's it's great to say, like, oh, yeah, you know, we can definitely deliver, blah, blah, blah. You've had 10 years, mate. Like, come, you've got to really do something now. Words are all fine and well, but if it doesn't translate into increasingly better products then you're just fucked which is fine because it's not like they didn't get opportunities to it's not like they didn't have every chance to continue to grow to be one of the biggest publishers and one of the biggest game developers on the planet and continue their their foothold that they had in the industry ubisoft will if it continues like this go down in history as one of the biggest fucking fumbles ever with what they've had access to and what games people have loved from them for years and years and it will be thoroughly deserved. The ball's been in their court the whole time and they've been fucking dribbling in the corner. And I don't mean with the ball, they've just actually been dribbling all over themselves. By the way, that's the Assassin's Creed update. I'm sure I'd, I've missed some stuff. I have like a million tabs open. Apparently they're also, the board is also launching an investigation into the company struggles. So I'm sure they're gonna find some interesting things like, yeah, we're fucking useless. By the way, I'll keep up with this and I'm sure you will because it'll be all over social media when inevitably the game comes out and it's either good or it isn't. And there we go. Thanks for watching as always. Go by GameSups, link in the video description and suggest me content if there's something you want to see covered, uh, either Discord or Twitter, whatever it's going to be. And I'll see you next time. Peace.